the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. It was contrary to us. It was against us. And took it out of the way. Imagine that scene. Removing it from our path as if it was, it was some obstruction that was blocking us from getting to God. God was over there and I'm over here. And here's the holy law of God that I can never keep, that I can never live up to, that I can never do on my own. And there it is. It's stopping me from getting to God. But when Jesus died on the cross, He moved it out of the way. And I can run to God. Amen. I can get to Him. The curse of the law has been moved. It's removed. It's taken out of the way so that we can get to a holy God. And I don't know if that means anything to you tonight in Rogersville, Tennessee, but it means something to me. Yeah. The fact that I can get to a holy God, that I can wrap my arms around Him, and He wraps His arms around me. Listen, God's not, listen, you're not holding on to God. God's holding on to you. Because the handwriting of ordinance, the curse of the law has been removed from our path. And we can get there. Because the blood of Jesus has paved the way for us. That blood flowing from the cross has paved the way. Remove the handwriting of ordinances. It removed the curse of the law that nobody could ever keep. And allowed us to get there. Somebody said, well, you know, my religion is the Ten Commandments. My, my life, I'm planning on getting to heaven by following the Ten Commandments. If that's your religion, you're going to hell. Because you can't do it. You cannot do it. If that's your religion, if that's what you're telling me tonight, then you're on your way to hell. And I can say that with every ounce of Scripture and the Holy Spirit backing it up. Because there's no way that you could keep the law. There's no way that you could keep the law. James 2.10 says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law yet offended in one point is guilty of all. So you cannot tell me that at one time in your life you've never had an evil thought. You cannot tell me that at some time in your life you've never had a covetous thought. You can't tell me that at some time in your life you've never lusted after someone or something. You cannot tell me that at some time in your life you've never told a lie. By the way, I love the way we categorize lies. We call them little white lies. And we have big lies. A lie's a lie. It's all sin. The, the day I got saved, the preacher was preaching. He said, listen, I want to tell you something. Sin is sin before a holy God. You call your sin little. Somebody else has a big sin. But sin is sin before a holy God. It's all. It's keeping you from God. You can't tell me that at some time in your life you've never told a lie. If you lied, even a little, what you might call a small lie, a white lie, whatever you want to call it, you've broken the, the commandments of God. And if you've broken it in one area, you've broken it all. If you've ever taken something that wasn't yours, 